we've been on a series for, for, for the month of January. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, light. Look at another person and say, light. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you just give me Romans chapter 1 verse 20 while I say some things. Amen. Um, many of us believe, or for generations, the church believed that it's after the devil, its biggest problem was science. Amen? <laughs> after the devil, the church's biggest problem was science. Because science seemed to negate everything we believe about God. They have their own theory of evolution. They have their own theory of uh, the beginning of the earth. Amen? Come on, now, amen? So for the most part of it, it was believed that science was against God. Amen? Come on, now, talk to me now. Amen? amen? Some of us still even believe that. All these scientists that don't believe in God. Science is not the reason why they do not believe in God. Come on, do we get that? That is their excuse for not believing in God. Because nobody looks at science right with the right eyes and disbelieves God. Come on now, amen? As a matter of fact, there is nothing about God that I cannot prove to you with science. So how can science disprove God? How can the creation be a tool used to, dis, to, uh, to discredit the creator? The reason why you believe that there is no techno company is the techno phone in your hand. Are you okay? If there is a techno phone in your hand, it is enough evidence to show that there is a company called techno. Talk to me now, somebody. If you hold the phone and you refuse to believe in the company, something is wrong with what you're thinking. Talk to me now. The Bible says they became vain in their imagination. That's where the problem starts. It's not the creation. Talk to me now, somebody. They became vain in their imagination so that they will take a thing and their imagination, it will be a vain thought that will proceed out of that stuff. So they begin to say there is no God. Why? Because of this thing. Hold on. He's the one that made it. So there's nothing wrong with the thing. There's everything wrong with their imagination. Amen. amen. Come on now. Amen. amen. Okay. Let, let's double back maybe to, uh, double back to verse 16. Let's just double back to verse 16. I just, uh, it's light we're talking about. Amen. That's what neighbor say, up nepa. That's not what we are talking about. <laughs> Amen. Genesis, uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Can I get that? I'm not sure what the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto <laughs> salvation to them that believe. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I want us to take it up to 20. That's what I want to put up on the screen. Uh, project. Okay, who's going to read for me? King James Version, please. Thou knowest not what thou sayest. King James Version, please. All right. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Of Christ. Why? It is the power of God unto what? Talk to me now, someone. It is a what, everybody? If you study physics, you will get to understand power. It is the power of God unto salvation for how many people? Everyone who does what? Who believes? For the Jews first and also for the Greek. We're not going to talking about the first. Let's just leave that. Next verse. For in it, the righteousness of God. Give me King James Version, not New King James, please. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by what, everyone? The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who holds the truth? Okay. <laughs> Let's go to that. He said, for the wrath of God is what, everyone? Is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who will do what? Who hold the truth in what? Um, Seller. Pause. Meditate on what you just heard. There are some people who have the ability to hold the truth in unrighteousness. Do we get that? Do we get that? If we just want to do this one close, so I'll just move, but go meditate on it. So it is, not everything
everything you watch on CNN is the truth. Some people know how to hold the truth in unrighteousness. If you believe what they, have given to, what they are giving to you, it is unrighteousness that you have received. They have a way of holding facts and coming up with unrighteousness. Uh, verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is what, everybody? Is manifest in them. For God had done it, what? Had shown it unto them. So what they know, who revealed it to them? Talk to me, church. What the scientist knows, who revealed it to him? Who put it there for him to find? God. But he said, for the invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are what? Even his eternal what, everybody? Power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know what? That thing that they hold on to and say, this is the reason why I don't believe in God. It is actually a snare for them. Because by the time you appear and say, God, it's because I didn't see you, that's why I did not believe. He said, I'm the one who put this there so that you, when you appear before me, you will not have any excuse to say, I did not know that there is a God. We didn't hear that. Uh, who gets the point? 21. Because that, because that when they knew God, oh, they knew, the fact that you said there is no God, you just put God in the equation. Why would you be talking about something that does not exist? So that, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as what? The problem is not that they don't believe that there is a God, though. The problem is they refuse to glorify him as God. Uh, that's what they'll tell you the guy upstairs. <laughs> He's a guy now. Do you understand? Or oh, they recognize there is somebody who is pulling the string somewhere, but they refuse to glorify him as God. Say, so who call him God, I beg? <laughs> Do you understand? Why? Because they want to be gods. Their own desire is their God. And if they were acknowledged as God, they, they cannot live by their desires. They can't fulfill their desires. Are we getting this? Neither were thankful. They won't thank him for what they have found. They will rather glorify themselves as the ones who have done what? Who have discovered something new. Listen to me. Listen to me. The scientist does not create anything. He invents he discovers the creation of God, then he uses the principle to invent something. Who is getting what I'm saying here? Okay. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their, see where the problem is. Became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Why was their foolish heart darkened? Wait now, not the first thing. He said, but became vain in their imagination, then their foolish heart was what? Darkened. It means darkness was not in it. Oh. Until they opened a gate called imagination. As soon as they opened the gate called imagination in, in, in vanity, it, towards darkness, darkness flowed from hell into their heart and filled it up. I can prove it to you. Pastor even read that scripture. Come on, are we here now? Come on, are we here now? That's why Jesus say, if Jesus was speaking, why do you think he said, do not lay up treasures for yourself in the earth? Where all these things can destroy. But he said you should lay up treasures where? Follow me now, church. For where your treasure is, an imagination is a thing of the heart. If your treasure is in heaven, your heart will be turned towards heaven. And you and I know that every time we draw a picture of heaven, what proceeds from it? Light. Talk to me now. You think it's just, no, no, no. That's a reality. Light proceeds from the throne of God. Are we following this? Come on, are we following this? So when your treasure is in heaven, your heart will also be turned where? Your imagination will now be open towards what? So now this is the thing. How images are formed in your heart is light. That's why if you read that scripture and you go down, it says that the light for the eye is the light of the body. Um, that's not what it's really saying. The last time I checked, when there's no power supply, your eye does not light up the place for your body to be able to move. What he was actually saying is, the eye is the gateway through which light enters your body. Science proves it. That's why I say you can't use science to disprove God. How do you see? You think you are seeing me? You're not seeing me. It is light rays that bounce off my body that hits your eyes. Your eyes take that light ray and send it as neural signals to your brain. Your brain interprets the light that went through your eye as the image you think you are seeing. It's your brain that is giving you this image that you are looking at. What your eye is actually receiving is light. 
who is getting what? Please follow what I'm saying here. This is the reason why some people say, I have money, I don't know what business. It can't be possible, I don't know what business to, to do. Do you understand why? Because when I turn my, the gateway of my heart, my imagination towards heaven, light from heaven will proceed through that gateway. And what will happen to my heart, my wise heart? Light will fill it up. Who is getting what I'm saying? Now, if light is responsible for images from the earth, do you understand how you receive ideas now? A child of God who is operating at the speed of light cannot lack ideas. It is impossible. <sighs> Except you are holding the truth in unrighteousness. Come on now, somebody. Are we here? So, so, <sighs> so Jesus said that the light of the body, he said, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Right? Then he said, the light of the body is the eye. And then he now says, <laughs> he said, if your eye be single, and we've been using motivational preacher like me, <laughs> like I was, not now. <laughs> amen? Come on, amen? Motivational preacher like me those days, brethren, the Bible says, if your eye be single, brethren, focus, tap your name and say, focus, church. Tap your neighbor and say, focus. Oh, sorry. I was speaking in English. I said, Tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, focus. Now you will respond it. Amen? Oh, we read the Bible says, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of life. Brethren, when you are, your eye, you are focused, your life will be lit up with the light of God. Say amen, church. Well done. <laughs> When you finish, then you go home and go and drink five alive because you have exhausted all the strength you have trying to speak Queen's English. Now, look up everybody. Look up everybody. That's not what he's talking about. How do I know? Look at the statement that followed. First, he said, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of what? Then he said, if your eye be evil. Hold on. When did the opposite of single become evil? When? Because if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. He then says, if your eye be evil... Your whole body will be full of darkness. That's the opposite of the first statement. That means it's supposed to be saying, if your eye is not single, or if your eye, if you are not focused, your whole body. No, no, no. That was not what he was talking about. When he said, if your eye be single, he said, if your eye be fixed. Because it just it's not a different message. It's the same message with the one he was preaching before. Where your treasure is. Do you understand? So if your heart is fixed to heaven, what will happen to the whole of your body? Light will fill you up. I. Some people don't understand the reason why a pastor lays a hand. Somebody come, please. Somebody come. <laughs> please come. They don't understand the reason why. No, I need another person. Call it. Please come. Stand. Be- come now. Where are you going? I need both of you. Stand here. Now you stand behind. You are the usher. Stand behind. He's about to fall under the anointing. You must not disgrace my anointing. You must not disgrace. You must fall. That's what I'm telling you. Do you understand? <laughs> Church, are we together? You are sure we are together? If we are together, come and stand so you fall also. Call it, make sure he's almost at the floor before you catch him. I say, okay, look up. Now look up, everyone. People don't understand the reason why they lay hand on somebody. Let him go down. What are you doing? Don't disgrace my anointing. Look up, everyone. They lay hand on somebody. Receive it now. Let him go down. Drop him. This shine shine cloth must be dirty. How will you come to church and be looking more finer than me and pastor? Receive it now. No, no. Let him. Let him. Leave him alone. Good. He's in the, under the influence. Leave him. Lie down there. Why did he fall? Why are you standing up? Now, church, why did he fall under the anointing? I caught you a scripture. The light shined in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. Do you understand? Uh, Do you know light is energy? Hmm? Darkness too. Do you understand? That's what Jesus said. If (laughs) If the light that is in you be darkness, you're not getting what I'm saying. If light can sustain someone, darkness, there are some people who are sustained by darkness. The cult is not sustained by light. He is sustained by darkness. Darkness is what is powering, powering his life. 
So if you see him stand, it's not light that is keeping him standing. It is darkness that is keeping him standing. The day you withdraw, that's what, so when the devil, the devil is the lord of darkness. The day he withdraws, the, that's why the devil can't kill a, Christ, a born again Christian that knows his rights. You know why? He can't withdraw the light that is sustaining you. That's what Jesus said. I lay, you know what the Bible says? In him was what? Life. In him was what? That life was what? Do you understand? The life that, that kept him walking was what? Talk to me, church. Was what? Was light. So for him to drop dead, you have to withdraw the light. The day you withdraw light, you have withdrawn his life, the body will drop dead. That's why he said, no man taketh my life, my light from me. I am the one that decides to drop it. That's why I know some of us will not leave the earth without knowing. We say, hey, gather all my children. And I line up like this. Where are your grandchildren? Let them stand next to you. You say, you see, I finished my work here now. I'm about to go. So you, this is how your life is going to be. You, you are a very good person, but you drink too much, Gary. You don't know that you are a king. Be eating turkey now. You, this is how your life will go. By the time you have finished blessing all of them, you say, I finished my work here. I am. You don't die by accident. Because no man takes away your life. You lay down. You don't understand. You're the one that says, okay, I'm done here. We have tried. Now let's go and live forever in light. Do you understand? So we drop this light that keeps this body here. I say, this light, it don't do. Hi, God. Let me stop talking. Like, are we close now? Do we understand? Now, it's not a prayer point. Keep lying down there. It's not a prayer point. Do you see how bold I am? Now, now, it's my light that is keeping me here. Just hold on. Do you, do you see how bold I am that I will not just leave the earth? It is because I understand something. It is that understanding that gives me boldness. Uh, if I boast, I boast in the Lord. Who understands what? So why did he fall on Why do, would the pastor lay hand on him and he will fall? Because a darkness has given way. So when he stands up again, I'll stand up. It, it is in what he's rising up. It is in light. It is a release of light that drove away darkness. So you see the physical representation. The one who used to hold the body has left. Ah. So it drops. When it stands up now, it's something else. That's how you, this is how you maintain your healing. Because healing comes as a function of light. If darkness begins to show, you say, no, 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 no. My body is full of light. But beyond just saying it, you must fix your heart. On the light of God. On the light of God's word. Because the moment you start saying, hey, the pain here. Hey, hey, I am sick again. Hey, this thing must be pneumonia. Ah, this one is cancer. What you are opening up your imagination to is darkness. That's why they take some people to the hospital. They say, what's the problem? When the doctor checks in the morning, is pneumonia. By the time he comes in the afternoon to come and give him pneumonia drugs, they'll discover it is hepatitis. When they finish with that one, and they say they come in the evening, they'll come and discover that this thing looks like cancer. By the time they come in the next morning, it has to be diabetes. Do you understand? You know why? That person's body, this body, his body is full of darkness. It is not medicine that will cure it. It is light. You didn't hear that. Pray all you want. Do all you want to do. Whatever you are going to do, because this person's body is full of darkness. What will happen to the body? The body begins to die. Are we here? No man taketh my life, my light from me. I lay down at my will. Listen to me. No babalawo in the village can take it from you. You are the one that lays it down. How do they do it? They tell you one babalawo has done something in the village. You believe it. You now open your imagination to darkness. As you open, hey, so they have taken my name there now. That I know now that we drive me from work because of this thing. In fact, the that one that frowned, the person that frowned at you did not frown at you because of what happened in the village. His wife gave him serious trouble in the morning before he came to work. That's why he's frowning. But you now are opening your imagination and saying he doesn't like me. That's the day he will start not liking you. Because you have opened your heart to that darkness. That darkness will flood you. And every time he sees you, the darkness will talk to him. Frown and keep going. Come on now. Try this now for one week. You know, I like this church because we're a practical church. Now go for the next seven days and try what I'm telling you. Be, that's what I say. Stand in front of the mirror. Look at it. Say, only me one. Fine like this. 
Everywhere you go, everybody will say, uh-uh, why are you fine like this? You know why? You've opened your imagination to that light. Do you understand? But when you, 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 you open your every, imagination, is everything. You open your imagination to darkness, I know fine. See my head bent. Go she the front. <laughs> You are even who didn't used to see it before. So what did you do your goshi like this? <laughs> Come on now, someone. Am I saying the truth here? Am I saying the truth here? That's why if you tell you are either married to your wife or your husband or you are in a relationship, that person, you are fine. You keep saying you are fine every day. You keep saying, the person will begin to feel fine. You know why? Because the person has started opening his or her imagination towards that. Uh, I hope you know there's a relationship between light and sound. Let me wrap, round up with this. There's a relationship between light. Okay, yeah, you can go and sit down now. We can go with the light. Amen. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. There's a relationship between light and sound. Lightning and thunder. Then the Bible says in the book of Revelation that lightning and thunder proceeds from the throne of God. If it proceeds from the throne of God, where is it going? Where is it going now? It's proceeding from the throne of God to the universe. Now, anybody who masters the act of opening the gateway of his imagination towards heaven, that light will flood his heart. This is the reason why you wake up in the morning with new song. You didn't hear that. Because lightning is light, thunder is sound. Right? That's where the new songs come from now. Now, at least I, I look at all the choir members. You will sing everybody's song. Sing everybody's song. When are you going to stand here and sing? Uh, Pastor, what permitted? When will you stand here and sing your own song? So we know that you, every morning you have mastered the art of opening the gateway of your imagination towards heaven. Because when we sing, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O God, is because one man went to heaven and came back. John, in the book of Revelation. That's why we have that song. Are we getting this? So you, you must learn. There is no money I don't wake up with a new sound. There is absolutely no money. You know why? You can master the act of programming your, the gate of your imagination, your heart, to be tuned to heaven while you sleep. You didn't hear that. That's the reason why people wake up with visions, wake up with that. You just wake up in the morning. You know you know something. How you know the thing you do not know? What you even know, you cannot even tell anybody. But you stand up with, in faith. You pick up a pen and a bio, knowing that you know something that you are about to write. As soon as you sit down to write, you begin to write. And then you go three hours. But when you learn that thing, you can't tell anybody. Has it happened to anybody here? Great. So what was happening to you? It's called sovereign experience, right? Because this experience has nothing to do with you intentionally doing anything. It happened to you. But you see that sovereign experience, it can become your everyday living. Who is getting what I'm saying here? So if I come to church today, and for whatever reason, I bring a bottle of blended juice. And I give it to him. It's a sovereign experience. He didn't ask me for it. He didn't plan for it. He came to him. But now that he has tested the juice, he can decide to go and buy a dozen and put in his fridge. He didn't hear me. So keep waiting for visions when you can decide every day. I don't sleep and wake up without one. Because when you get it without asking, it's a sovereign experience. But what is heaven telling you? What heaven is doing is, hello, we sell this thing here, have a taste. When you have it, they expect you to desire. So what you are doing is stirring your desire, your desire for that stuff. That's why the Bible says desire spiritual gifts. Do you understand? Meaning, the first time you tested it, no, you did not know anything. You can't desire what you don't know anything about. So if you desire it, it is because somebody gave you a taste. Do we get that? So everything heaven gives to you is so that you can taste something. And begin to desire it. So if you have tasted a vision before, desire it. And you will get more of it. Now, desire is a thing of the heart. So when you desire, what is that? You've opened the gateway of your heart again. If you now desire something that comes from heaven, you are, you're, what you are doing is you are turning your heart. So don't go to bed without engaging your heart towards heaven. It's like turning your antenna in one direction. Then you leave the antenna alone and go on your TV. What's going to happen to the TV? You will now begin to receive signals and watch and hear things. You want to hear God? This is it. Simple. I hear I see people just say, I, I, I really need to hear from God. I really need to hear from God. I'm going on a 21 days fasting and prayer. Well done. Kaje, Gahanya, start going. You know what that means in Hausa? See road, start going. You understand? 
Go on to the one day's person of prayer. Somebody is sitting down here where everybody is making noise and hearing God very clear. Because you will go on your 21 days retreat and still not hear God and come back. Why? You don't know how to tune the gateway of your heart towards heaven to receive light. So I, 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 mean, I see people like, I'm looking for a quiet place. I want to hear God. We stay in the market and hear him clear. <laughs> you understand? So what is the relationship between light and sound? Let me round up. Lightning and thunder. Thunder does not just form. It, thunder is as a result of lightning. Because if uh, the we, mommy is in the house will help us, ladies in the house will help us. If you put your hand into a bag of beans, your hand will push the beans to the side, right? So your hand will go in through it. When you pull your hand back, what will happen? The beans will fall back. As they are falling and touching each other, they are making sound. Do you understand? So lightning is light traveling through space into the earth. Are we getting this? As it moves through the airspace, it pushes the air to the side and passes. When it passes, the air drops back into that space. As they come together, they collide. That's your thunder. What does that mean? <laughs> Every time light, revelation, travels from heaven into the earth, it will create that kind of effect. So if you hear anybody come up with a new song, it is because light moved. You didn't hear me. Kai, I wish they got that one. If you hear anybody ever sing a new song, it's because light from heaven passed into the earth. So that person heard the sound, he might not have seen the light. Uh, because you might not see the lightning, but you will surely hear the thunder. So what, why, why did heaven put it that way? So that whenever there is a new song, you might, not have, you might have missed the lightning. Listen to the lyrics of the song. It will show you what light entered the earth. Way make a miracle walk, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Do you understand? Why is that? Why did that song come? It's because light, revelation of the way maker, entered the earth. Maybe people did not pay attention. Let this song inform them that light moved. Come on, do we get this? That's what choir is actually supposed to be. That's why you sing before pastor comes up. You know why? So that, you see, if the people are not tuned to the frequency of the light, you will use sound to tune them to that frequency. Then when he brings the light, they will be able to see it. Do you understand that? So that, when we show up here, this is not a stage for performance. We are not here to perform. So the drummer is performing, the keyboard is performing, everybody is performing, the singer is performing, pastor two is coming to perform. No, 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 no. When we come here, it is a fellowship of light. It is the light you are fellowshiped with that you have drawn into your body that you bring here. That's why the Bible says, do not neglect the gathering of who? Of brethren. And Jesus called you the brethren light. He said, you are the light of the world. So whenever we come to fellowship, what do you think we come to? It is the fellowship of light. You watch around with this. You watch the movie, Lord of the Rings. And they call one of the parts, Fellowship of the Rings. And everybody who had the, one of the rings showed up there. So every time you and I show up here, what do you think we have come to fellowship in? It's the fellowship of the light. So the light of healing that you carry. When you show up here, I partake of that light of healing. That's what they call love feast. Do you understand? Love feast is not you cook your tribal food and you bring and we all eat. That's the physical way we, we do that spiritual representation. The real one is that you bring the light of God you have received. You bring the light of God you have received. He brings the light of God you have received. She brings the light of God she has received. We all show up here. So as we are all ministering to one another, even good morning, I'm releasing a light. So you are depressed because darkness has filled you up. But when I say, hey, good morning, you look good. What happens? Light jumps out of me into you. And then you become happy again. Why? You met somebody who is carrying light. So I run up today. This is what God is doing to you and I. He's not just showing us he is light. He's showing you, look, you are like me. You are light. You are the light of the world. This is what happens when you move. If you, that's why you move. You have not said one word, but people are hearing things. You know why? Lightning, when it moves, thunder will proceed. Lift up your hands to heaven. Just declare, I am the light of my family. 